Okay, I think we'll start the lecture now. It's um, just about a little after five past eleven, so we'll uh, we go ahead and we'll continue until just about five past five to twelve. Okay, um, right. Let's switch over and have a look at the the actual lecture. All right. So this one we're going to. Uh, work on some of the fundamentals of software development with C Sharp. You know, I'm really going to um, bring you through some of the basics today, um, but I'm going to show you some programs and, and, and work through some of those as well. Um, I suppose I've selected some of the, the fundamentals, and um, not all of them, because you guys can program already. You know, you're very good programmers, and you're excellent programmers, in fact, and you know, you've done a lot of programming last year in JavaScript. And really, I'm trying to get you back to thinking about oh, oh but we want to look at um, how we might do that in C Sharp first. So um, it's going to be very simple, straightforward run through today. Um, in the lessons that follow, the short lesson that follows, I'm going to do some things like how do we work with file handling? How do we work with, with JSON? How do we do command line arguments processing? A little bit more oh, oh. So we'll, um, we'll, you know, we'll get into a little bit more detail by the end of this week. And next week, we'll work on some OO oh, oh, proper. Right, so as I said, C Sharp fundamentals. So the first thing we have to think about in C Sharp is um, our, our, our identifiers. And then we use the term identifier as a, another way of of referring to a name and that event that identifies a class a variable a function or any other user defined item in a c-sharp application so and um, the basic rules stand for naming classes and other identifiers in c-sharp as follows so you, you must begin with a letter it could be followed by a sequence of letters zero to nine or an underscore and um, the first character in an ident identifier cannot be a digit, okay? And you can't contain any of the embedded space or symbols such as the list that are shown here. And um, we don't have to worry too much about this. We're used to this already. And of course, an identifier should not be a C-sharp keyword. I guess what's slightly different with, um, with C-sharp from the programming languages that you would have worked with previously is that you um, have different kinds of data types going on here. And you used JavaScript last year, and that was pretty good for, for um, you know, untyped data. And you know, we, it brings it, so there's great flexibility around untyped data. But you know, it also means that you know you have a lot more checking to do. If you can get the language to do the checking for you, and um, it makes an awful lot of well, it makes life an awful lot easier, especially at compile time. So you can check for inconsistencies or, or, or issues that might um, arise out of type conversions and so forth when um, at the compile time rather than runtime. You don't have to do all these runtime checks. So um, you did all this before when you programmed with Java and you probably ended up forgetting about it because it wasn't such an issue. Um, so now um, what we're going to look at are just some of the particulars around um, the different kinds of types that you have in C Sharp. You know, they're not new for you, but you should you should get to know them all the same. Um, and a lot of the time, you don't have to worry about these things because uh, we tend to do an awful lot of string processing or some numerical stuff. So it's uh, it's uh, something you don't have to worry too much about. I'm just going to increase the lights just a little bit here if I can, um, as I seem to be blurring just a little bit. So let's see if that helps. Okay. Okay. So really, we need to think about you know integers. We need to think about real type num real numbers, floats, doubles, and so forth, chars and booleans. Okay, so we we um, when we think about integers, we think about positive and negative. We've got two kinds. We've got int and long. Um, some of these have different kinds of um, some different kinds of. Uh, Sizes, so you're looking at 32, 32 bit or 64 bit and so forth, and we can work with those. Um, we have double or floats, and they can be um, floating point numbers such as pi, for example, 3.147 or minus 20 and so forth. Um, and then we have chars, which are single characters, little x, capital Y. We use single quotes to define chars. And then we have booleans, and they have um, two states, true or false. These are, um, these are also identifiers, so you can't call something true or false. Um, I'm having a little bit of a problem with my lights here, folks, so um, let's see if I can fix that. Um, so all of the value type variables, and that's what's key, I guess, here, is that they're called value types. You know, and these are some of your, your 
um, default types that you would have had with Java as well. They have ranges, default values, and you can check these using the size of. Um, it's important to know this information when you do some kind of computation work um, a little bit later. So we, so one thing I should know um, that if you look at the top right of the screen, I'm, I've got a little symbol for called demo, and we should be able to, we should be able to find a program in the CS264 Moodle space that will demonstrate some of this stuff. So I'm going to leave it for a second here. Um, uh, I'm going to have a peek here and see what happens. Um, let me go to Visual Studio Code. And I have a simple program that I've created. Um, I see that there's a little, when you say the, the, the slides, Brian, are a little bit low, they're getting cut off. Um, I'm, I'm not sure why that's happening here. I mean, it looks fine on my on my stream, um, um, but I'll just check. Maybe we'll just check. Maybe maybe the stream has moved just a little bit. Um, is that a little bit better? Yeah. Yeah. Is that one a little bit better? Yeah. Okay. Thanks about. It. Sorry about that. That's great. Thanks for the chat and the feedback. It's really good to have that. Okay. So. What I've done, um, what I've done now is, uh, so I've created a small application that will allow us to look at some of these things and deal with some of the values. So we can see that um, I've created a bunch of these uh, variables um, uh, further down in this program. So what's happened is this this particular demo program will run for all of the the all of the slides, I guess you know, or for good many of them anyway. And we can see the difference between int, long, float, double, booleans, and so forth. Um, and uh, we can run the application and um, we can go into Zen mode here. Let's have a look. Um, and let's bring up our terminal. And you can see that the size of an int is four. You can see that the size of um, along is eight, size of a float is four, size of a double is eight, and so forth. So these kind of things matter when you're doing some kinds of computations or when you're trying to convert or assign something from one from one type of, uh, of, pro, uh, of variable to another. Okay, so let's um, return here. I guess the point I'm trying to make as well is that these are called the value types. So these are the built-in default types that you have with C-sharp. Okay, we're always... Um, probably more interested in the, the, the more exciting types, you know, like classes and stuff that we generate. But at the core, the class members boil down to, to having a lists of these. Okay, so I guess what's more interesting is that we have data types that are called reference types. Okay, and the reference types in C Sharp um, are really, really interesting. Okay, they don't contain any data that, stored in the variables themselves, but they're a reference, and that means they're a memory reference or a memory location to the variables. So for example, object and string, and there's another called dynamic, um, would be examples of reference types. Um, so some of the facts that we might like to know about these is that you can have a reference type called object, and that is an alias for system.object. So, and this can be assigned a literal value of null. Um, uh, you can anywhere you see the word object, you can you can put in system dot object. So it's just an alias. Objects um, have a term called have terms associated with them called boxing. Okay, so we're looking at something called boxing and unboxing, and that's how you work on converting um, a value type to an object. The reverse is unboxing. Okay, so you can do that. You can. Um, at any point in your program. Sometimes, I guess, in your previous um, programming experience, you will see uh, and have read about casting. So you're trying to cast from one type to another type so that you know you might have a specific requirement on a, a method that expects you to have data of a value of a, of a particular type in there, and you do some casting. So we can look at boxing that allows you to be able to do all that kind of stuff as well, and the reverse is unboxing. If you look at this link in the right-hand side here, um, uh, you can click through to this link, and if you see an arrow, usually there's a link somewhere. I think this probably gives you a list or a link to a Microsoft reference. So we can just go through, and it'll take you to boxing and unboxing. So I've done the work for you, Okay, and found some of the, the nice um, examples. And uh, you click these links, these arrows that should take you there.
Okay, so we'll see a little bit more about boxing and unboxing in an example in a few minutes, okay? So the other one would be string. Um, strings are interesting because um, they are reference types, okay? And so you can use the equality operators equals and not equals, and um, they're actually defined to compare the values of the string objects, not the references, because it's more intuitive for us. And that, that's really nice for us. But actually, um, what happening in C-sharp is that, and it's I guess the same thing you'll see in Java as well, is that strings are immutable. Okay? So that means they cannot be changed after they've been created. So if you have a look at the bottom um, the bottom screen here, um, and you'll see this piece of, so you'll see this piece of um, code saying string B is assigned the value hello, and B plus equals world. So we're essentially creating a new string called B with hello world in there. Okay, but what's really happening here? Okay, um, is B changing, actually, from hello to hello world? Yeah, and, and you're right, it is concatenation, Brian. Um, but, but what's happening is that, what's, ha what's really happening, I guess, is that B is assigned the value, so we create, the, these two double quotes are operators that allow us to create this string hello in memory. Then it has a memory reference. Then that reference is assigned to B, okay? So it, hello isn't assigned to B, the reference is assigned to B. So when we say B is concatenated, when we say that the string hello referenced by B is concatenated to the string that's been created called world, we end up creating a new string, okay? And that string um, is called hello world. And then that's assigned to B. And it means that the original strings hello and world are now available in memory for garbage collection and can be can be deleted um, by your garbage collector. So there's a lot going on when you see this, okay? Um, and I need you to to really understand what's happening, I suppose, um, at, at a core level, so you can you can have a sense of what's going on with your with your applications when you write them. So this is kind of the interesting thing, okay? Um, okay, so um, let's. Go back and have another quick look at um, Visual Studio Code then, okay? And I, I did some little example for you here where we have the reference types. And again, we have um, the string type, okay? So we can see this example. Remember, strings are immutable. So we create this, hello, create a string called B, and we'll append um, the, the contents of B to this. So let's maybe change this a little bit so it doesn't look silly. Um, oh, well, let's leave it and see how it works. Okay, so we can run this particular application again, and and if we run, we'll see that the string, what's happening, I guess, is that we start off a string A, hello, and we start off a string B, H. It's not a character, it's a string because it's got double quotes, okay, that's important to see. Then we append hello to string B. And then, so we have two strings. So A now contains um, hello and B contains hello, okay? But if we compare the two strings with the operator equals, like double equals, A equals B, and then we actually compare the object reference to see if the reference for A equals the reference to B, we should see down here that actually um, that uh, this doesn't work terribly well. It doesn't, it works as expected for me. I don't know if it works as expected for you, but the string value comparison using the equals is true, but the string reference is false, okay? Because strings are immutable. And really we're looking at references, string A, A is a reference variable. It's not actually um, value type. It's a reference type and B is, has a reference type and that, that's a string, okay? so. It's kind of important a little bit later you'll see this and it would be useful for us okay but let's go back to keynote okay so this is interesting okay for me it's interesting okay now we'll go back and have a little bit look at the boxing that i okay um yeah let's go have a look at boxing i think i give an example of boxing as well there a few minutes ago so if we scroll down um now we look at boxing and that's, so boxing and unboxing, and that's another aspect that we have with C-sharp, it will, will be worth, worth looking at. Okay, so in this particular example here, we have a, a, a variable called i, it has a value type, it's an int, one, two, three, and we create an object, o, and we assign the 
we sign i to o. So what is that actually doing? It's not the, the i isn't a reference type. It's a you know a value type. What it ends up doing is it copies the value of i into o. Now we change the value of i to something else. It originally started one to three. Now it's four five six. The change in i doesn't actually affect the value stored in o. Okay, so we can have a look at the value of i and value of o, and we can see that. And if we look at the example down here, we can see that the object value the object value still remains the same, even though the value type changed. So I think it's important that you realize in C sharp programming that we we must have um, we must really understand the difference between the value types and the reference types. Unboxing, of course, is the opposite. So we'll look at trying to reverse that situation. So in this particular case now, we will reuse the variables i and o from earlier, and we will look at attempting to unbox. Okay. So we want to, we want to convert from this object o, which we know actually was probably originally taken from int i, we're trying to create it to a short type. So we're trying to unbox. And that unboxing is a bit like the casting that you would have seen previously. Okay. So um, we're going to create a new variable called int i, and we're going to try to cast it using a short o. Okay. It should give us some error. Okay. okay. So, and it tells us that we're unable to cast, okay, this object of system type, type of, sorry, of type int to um, 32 to int 16. We can change this a little bit. If we comment out this line here, kill our and run this program again. Oh, got an error in here. No. Introducing a keystroke here. Let me just go in here. I don't want to kill the terminal, I just want to work. Okay. What am I after doing? I'm after inserting a, a key somewhere here. Uh, let me find this. Ah, oh, there it is, at the very top of the program. Okay, <laughs> I was switching. Um, I was switching there, and I didn't need to. Okay. 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 It's always a good idea to read the errors. Okay, it'll tell you what the errors are. Okay. So let's get back to this string four. Now I'm boxing, and now I'm unboxing, and then this time I can actually unbox. Okay, so it's fine. Okay, so it's worthwhile having a look and understand and getting that. Um. Uh. Uh. That's good. And um, thanks very much for uh, spotting the error. I was looking at this. <laughs> um, I was uh, should have looked at the, the chat. OK, I, I was switching between the console, trying to turn the console on. OK, so, okay, so that's really all I really need you to know a little bit about, about that kind of stuff. OK, so let's go back to our presentation. Okay, so there are other reference types. So there's dynamic and delegate, and we'll see example of these as we work through the module. Okay, Microsoft has a really good article on the reference types. They're here. Um, you know, click through and it'll be fine. And um, it's really worthwhile checking their documentation. It's super. There are strings. We talk about strings about them being immutable, and um, you can create what are called verbatim string literals with using an at uh, an ampersand, this at symbol, sorry, in front of um, a double quotation, so something like this. Um, and the reason is that the, you, you have these is, is, is that escape sequences are not processed. It makes it easier to write. So fully, fo fully qualified file names. So for example, if you want to include all of these codes, uh, back, back ticks in here, um, you know, you can stick a uh, front of them and it will generate this. Uh, sorry, it's, otherwise you'd have to write this, you know, and then, um, you know, sometimes you want to actually include all these quotations in here. Um, and, um, this makes it easier to do that. Okay. And the other thing about strings, which you see a little bit later, is that you can use the um, the double bracket operator to extract the characters from a string. So you know, strings is fun. You know, um, so let's um, 
move on with that one then. Okay. So the other thing we, we need to look about are C-sharp conditions and decision making. And so, um, again, C-sharp provides you with all the usual stuff um, for making decisions, if else, and switch statements. And it also includes my favorite operator, the hook operator, and the ternary operator, and um, this, that's this one, and that can, be, can also be used for decision making. Now, I, I've, read, you know, I've read over the years that um, in software, software engineering, they say that you, know, you shouldn't really use the hook operator if at all, you know, because it makes program code complex and, and not easy to read. So, so um, uh, but I love it, I use it all the time, and um, I probably won't change at this stage in my life. Okay, so looking at, um, at the, uh, the hook operator first. So we, we basically have an expression, hook, expression, colon, expression three. Okay, so what happens is that um, uh, we first evaluate expression one, and if that's true, then expression two is evaluated, and that becomes the value of the entire expression. If expression one is false, then expression three is evaluated, and that becomes the value of the entire expression. I, I you know, I, I really love this stuff, and last year you would have seen some of the demo programs I wrote in JavaScript, and I use an awful lot of that in those, in those programs. So, okay, so um, uh, use it if, you, if, you, if you, you're happy with them. Um, I'm delighted it's in C-sharp. Um, I use it all the time, as I said, okay. If then is our key, you know, decision-making statement. Um, so, and that's if some condition, a program block, um, or you use if condition else. And there, you, there, that's it. I mean, it's boring stuff. You know, you've seen this forever at this stage. Um, I guess um, conditions and expression that results in some Boolean type. Okay, and again, you know, you can have a look at the core examples if you want to check through um, Microsoft's guide here on that. Okay, so I'm more interested, I suppose, in the use of the switch statement. And um, it's a very, and the reason I'm interested in using the switch statement is because it gives us a, a nice way of, of um, of making decisions um, based on enumerated type inputs. Okay, so the decision-making statement switch, um, and it can. They have a nice example that they use for for dealing with enumerations here. Okay, so we're creating this color enumeration. I can't remember. Did you do enumerations when you were working in in C in Java? Um, uh, we kind of looked at it a little bit in JavaScript, um, but it, I'm not sure whether you use those enumerations specifically in Java. I've used them myself. It's a little bit a little bit messy, um, um, but let me know if you've used them or haven't used them. It would be good to know. But anyway, I'm going to explain it. I'm going to explain it here. Um, 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 okay, um, thanks for coming back to me. That, but okay, so when you think about um, enumerative types, okay, so if I was to say to you, what comes? If, let's say we're looking at a set of integers, and I say what comes after four, you know, it would be five, you know, and and if what comes before, what 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 comes? Um, so, but if I say to you. The color red, what comes after red? <laughs> you know, it doesn't really matter too much because you know you haven't defined what what, what those are. Um, if I say to you, if, if we know the sequence of letters and I say A, what comes after A, you could say B, you know, it depends, assuming we're looking at English and so forth. Okay, so really what's happening is that you have a, a set of elements where, you know, every element of the set, you know what becomes before and after that element in the set. So it makes life a little bit easy. So it's a nice way of enumeration. So we, we can set up enumerations in programming um, so that we don't have to say create a value type and then assign a, very, a name to the value type. So we instead of say create, say we want to have a, a set of um, three colors and think in terms of sets. Okay. Well, previously what people would do is they just create a variable called a value type called red, value type called green, value type called blue, and then be able to work through them. But in this particular case, we're 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 organizing and ordering these. So we say red is a color, we, we, we're calling it a color just because we're calling it a color, a color. you know, we could have called it anything here, we, you know, um, um, the next one will be green and the next one will be blue. So it gives us some sense of ordering as to, you know, green comes after red, blue comes after green, um, and so forth. And so that allows us to create this enumeration, okay? Now you'll see, I guess, in this particular code here as well, that we have, um, we have some, um, we have some modifiers in this in terms of making a pub public as well. So this has got to do with visibility. And we'll see more about visibility when we look at classes next time. Okay, um, so that's fine. Okay, so create, I've created this enumeration. It's a reference type. And now what I've 
interested. This is a nice statement here. So we're creating an we're creating a, a a reference variable called C that's of type color. We're casting to color. So we, we're not saying that it's going to pick up the value of red, green, or blue. What we're doing is we're actually creating a random number between um, zero and two. And we use that using random dot next, and that's a built-in. It's a built-in function, um, a, uh, a built-in method. Okay, or in in C sharp. So we're generating a new one of these numbers, um, and there'll be a number, a whole number between zero, one, or two, and then we're casting that to color, and that gives us a color. Okay, so that's really easy enough to do. Okay, now we're going to have a look and see what color was chosen. So we're switching this switching this variable so we're performing a switch which is a test on that enumerative type and if the case is colored up red then we can print out the color is red and we have a break statement so if we don't if we don't have this break statement then it will continue and continue and continue so we might as well break even though it won't match each of these cases here or it might match the default of course we will just do this and um, if it generates something that's unknown then that's um, interesting for us to see what's happening so that could to do with the number that's generated by the random number generator. Um, so anyway, so the pain point in this particular one is have a look at the enumeration and it's a type, uh, it's a value type defined by a set of name constants of an underlying integral numeric type. So that's what's important to this. We have this integral numeric type. Okay, um, it's also important, I guess, that you, you know um, the right, uh, that the use of the break and the default statements also. And, you know, uh, Microsoft has some great links on these, okay? If you check out the links, um, you'll find information on the switch, the random, and enumeration examples if you click any of these three arrows here. But let's switch over. We, we, we have a demo, so I think, I, well, I wrote a demo, so let's have a look and see if we can see it and make it run. Um, okay, um, let's have a look. Okay, so switching. Okay, um, so let's get cracking with this demo then. Um, okay, so this is the example. It's no different really to the one that's in the code and I'll, and I'll upload this of course online and we'll run this. Okay, and I see that you've used them in software testing as well. So yeah, enumerations, are, they're really useful. Okay, so the color was blue. Let's run it a few times and see what happens. It was green. Okay, so that's fine. So let's maybe change this to four, see what happens. Run it a few times. Colors unknown, okay? So we created this unknown color this time because of the value that we, we, we generated, okay? Um, so let's change this back again. So 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 enumerations are are really, really they're they're really useful, okay? Um, and uh, I like them a lot and I'd certainly recommend you looking at ways of doing this. And it's a much cleaner way of programming. You don't want to be creating um all these um, constant variables to assigning numbers to them, you know, just use the enumeration, it's a whole lot easier. Okay, any questions on that? If you want, just post them to the chat and it's fine. Um, uh, I, I said I, I would certainly recommend them, they're, they're, they're really useful. Okay, um, right, we move on to the next one, I guess. So iteration then is the, the usual stuff, you know, and um, that we've seen before. And um, we have looping, or another name for iteration is looping. Um, we use the while condition and that tests a statement, you know, um, before it ex executes the block of code. So as long as the condition is true, the block of code will will then um, be executed and normally there'll be some block something inside the code block in here that allows us to um, update the variables that are tested in the condition okay and um, there's also a do while condition and this one um, will always execute it at least once even if the condition is false because the condition follows okay the test condition so c sharp also provides the for 
statement. I'm not going to tell you about SFORS, but I mean, we have an initializer, we have conditions, we have an iterator, and uh, the um, they may or may not be present in some cases, but you can have a look at the first statements if you want and see them under C sharp here. But you're experienced programmers, you don't need to do it. It's here just for the sake of, of completeness. Um, I'm more interested in the for each statement because, you, again, you know, you would have seen for each when you were looking at JavaScript, and it works a little bit differently here. And I, I'm also getting this to use, a, I'm using this to have a um, a chance to show you something else to do with um, C sharp, of course. So the for each statement um, is really nice. It allows us to um, execute a statement or a block of statements for each element in an instance of an array or a collection. So if it's a if it's kind of some enumer uh, it's, if it's enumerative that you can iterate over it then that works very well for us as well so I think I'll just have the program working so I'll just um I think I, I think I wrote a program and I made it available for this one as well but I, I'll have a look and see um um no I didn't do that okay so let's just make one then. Uh, we'll run it first, and we can back and have a little bit of talk about it. Okay. Um, let's copy the code in from from here on the left. And um, let's make and we call it um, my far or something like that. Okay, so. Um, So I'm just using the command line to, to create this. I could have done it inside VS Code, but I didn't. Um, go in here. And we just change this to the code. And I, of course, I'll accept this. Okay. Okay, so here we have the, the, the program that I, I had a little bit earlier. Um, I'll uh, just quickly go through it. So, so what's happening here is that, um, well, we're creating a class called for each loop, and it's just a, it's an executable class because we have our main in here. So what I've done is I have a list, okay, created a list. So this is a bit like your hash or something that you would have done when you were when you were working with your JavaScript. We we'll see we we'll see the use of chain brackets. It's a list. It's also a list in the sense of you you would have seen in your data structures. So um, and these are these are generic data structures that would be available in here. And so you know you you will have lists and stacks and and queues and the queues and all of that stuff that you had the good stuff you had from from your um your software uh, sorry your software development modules early on. Um all these are available for you. I mean they're available in Java as well. You probably have seen them there, but we have them in C sharp. Um uh, as generics and so we've created a list and here we've created a list of integers. Okay and we're specifically saying that we have this um this list called numbers. And so for each then allows us to iterate over the list of numbers. So for each int number in numbers, we calculate the sum and we output the sum. Okay. So this is a nice way of creating um, a list. I mean, we can probably put in 5.0 or something in here and make sure that we um, generate some errors just to test it out. But um, let's run this, okay. Um, oh, hello world, oh, that's because I didn't save this. <laughs> so let's run it again. <laughs> that was the default program, it was because I, I had replaced the default program.cs um, and I hadn't run it, so that was fine. So I have just, um, I have just done this now. My program and it's fine. Okay, a um, little bit of uh, 
issue here, you know, a little bit of issue here. It's got to do with namings and then um, I haven't really, really because it's not in the directory. The directory isn't the same as the, um, the example program here. So we can fix that, but it still works, it still runs and it collects this. So what's important for us, I guess, is that we, we have this new type that we can work with and a new iteration that we can use for each. And this is how it works in, in um, C Sharp. Okay, so you can also iterate um, over an array element, um, and we we can see if you look at, on the left here that this time I'm creating an array of characters, um, and again I'm using these chain brackets again to specify that array. We the previous one um, with the list we had an array as well, you know, but it was a list rather than an array, and um, so we. Um, we have different, we think about lists differently to arrays because we think about lists, we think about elements that are in the list and we know, well, give me the next element in the list or give me the element before, or give me the last element in the list or the first element. And so we, we, we use that kind of language to work with lists and we have those methods associated with, mess, with lists that allow us to be able to do that kind of, of, um, of uh, engagement with that data structure in that list. But with arrays, um, they're very much a fixed kind of data structure. And we have the zero, the first, the second, right up to the, the, the n minus one element of that. We allocate a fixed amount of space for arrays typically. Um, and some languages don't like you to change. Once you fix the space, that's the size of the that's the size of the data structure. Um, with lists, of course, we can always add a new one or reduce a new one. Okay. Um, so um, so let's have a look at this one here. So we have an array called um, uh, my array. It's got <laughs> characters for hello, and then we can just iterate over each one in the array. It's not, we've seen this before, and then um, with your JavaScript, I'm sure. But it's available within C Sharp as well, and that's really nice for us to have. So, okay, so that's, for me, that's pretty much all of the basic stuff in terms of working with um, working with uh, um, C sharp fundamentals okay and um, we've seen the basic basics of console applications we've seen programs all that kind of stuff so really what I'm interested in now is to to you know step ahead a little bit and um, tell you about um, object oriented development or object oriented design using um, C sharp. So I have a very simple program for you. So if you look at the piece of code on the right, okay, and um, we'll see that this is a code fragment that allows us to be able to um, talk about, uh, you can see it deals with shapes in some respects, okay? Um, and this is just a program fragment. I'll go through the full program in a few minutes, okay? So what I've done is I've created some rectangle object and um, you can see it should be very similar to the kind of thing you would have done with Java. With Java. Sorry, you can have object-oriented JavaScript, or it looks like it as well, of course. But um, so we're creating this rectangle, which is a new rectangle, and we're able to do something with that, display some details about that, and then and we've also got a circle as well. We work with a circle. So, um, so creating simple object-oriented application, um, object-oriented applications using using uh, C Sharp isn't too difficult. Let's have a look at the um, let's have a look at the the application. Um, so I have one shape example. Right. So here we have a very very simple object oriented program with C sharp okay um, it create it now I, I need to tell you from the outset this is really poor quality class design okay um, and if you look at this and think well that's what we we would have done previously and it all seems just fine and um, you know that's um that's okay too okay but we need to look at um, trying to examine and understand our classes and how we design classes so that they're they really are good, you know, and um, and what does good mean? So that's why we do this module in software design, so we get to that. Okay, so I'll work through this a little bit. So what I've done here is I've created this class called Circle, and this Circle has a a, a single 
um, member called radius. Okay, so it's a member variable. You'll notice that um, what's interesting, you should think about this, that this particular class, I haven't said anything about the visibility of this class. I haven't said anything about, um, apart I've said, it, only thing I've said we have this namespace called shape application. Um, I haven't said anything whether it's public or whether it's private. Is it an abstract class or any of that kind of stuff? So it just, it's a default class. Same, we have this, um, we have this member. So this is like an instance variable, if you like, in terms of the Java parlance. And you'll see that um, it's a double, it has a radius. Again, I have no visibility on this. So who can access it? You know, um, who can't? You know, is it private? Is it nothing? Okay. Is it a static? We don't static in here, so is it a class variable? Um, but it's not, because it doesn't have static, we know it's not a class variable. But, you know, we, we, we're not saying anything here about it. In this particular thing, then, uh, we have this public circle, and this is a constructor. And what we're doing in the constructor is we're setting the default value of the radius variable to 10.0. And um, it's a double, so we can, we can, we can do this. Okay. Then I have a, a setter method here, which, you know, it doesn't take any parameters, so it's not particularly good at all. Um, and this particular one isn't good. Um, it's uh, it's uh, public. We, we know that this one is public and void here, so it's fine. Um, so if we didn't explicitly say, why is this public? Well, maybe it's not public at this point, so we have to think about those um, things. Um, anyway, we've got this setter. And then I have another um, application called get, uh, sorry, another method called get area, and that returns the radius, returns the area, it's pi r squared. Then we have a method called display, and all that does is just tells us the radius and tells us the area. And that's a very simple circle class. So um, I have another one, rectangle, okay? And this is another one, okay? Um, and again, it has a length and the width. Again, I have a constructor that sets the um, length and width to default values of 10.0 and 2.5. Constructors are good because they should set some default values or do something here. Okay. Um, again, I set the side details, just as a setter method. I have a getter, met a getter method here as well, and the display method. Now, why is this bad design? Okay, well, we really should have had something that said it was, and this is fine because we're just dealing with these as, as independent entities or independent classes. Circles are not the same as, shape, as, as rectangles. And topologically, of course, they're pretty much the same, you know, but, um, but really, they have features in common. So for each of them, they have some way of specifying um, an area and some way of setting the parameters. So in some respects, we, we should be able to set the details for this and we should be able to set the, uh, calculate the area for something or get information about that. In practice, it probably would be a good idea to create, um, create uh, an, uh, a class which, which is a super class called shape and that provide some abstract methods. Uh, we know this from our Java. Uh, it gives us some abstract methods that uh, you know, we implement in the actual subclass. So we could say we could have a class um, rectangle extends shape, for example, and then we inherit a method from there. We heard a couple of methods from that. And then, so there are some default instantiations that come with shape, and then we, um, we override various methods if we wish as well. So that's a better kind of class design, and you know that that's the way, and you've seen this in your Java. But you know we can we can always do a little bit better with our designs, and we need to look at them and work through them. And this is why I give you this one, I guess. So anyway, we um, we calculate the shape here. Um, again, it's we create a new rectangle, and this is the instantiation. And again, this is the phrase we need to get to know instantiation. And we have to get we we have the setter here, and. Um, and we have getters, okay? And, I, and you can see I, I've commented these out because I just want to be sure that the, um, the constructor values work first. So let's um, run this one. Okay, so we have our rectangle, it's length, it's area, width, it's width and area. Not surprising. And our circle also works perfectly. We can, Change the values here. We can run again and get the extra values. So we can see that the default values have changed from, from the previous time. Okay. And we can do the same thing with circles as well. Okay. Different 
outputs to last time because this time we call these particular methods okay so i i know we haven't done um uh, class design with c sharp properly yet and we haven't gone into all the details and i'll do some of that next week but you do have an assignment coming up as well so it's um it's a useful it's a useful exercise to be able to um um think about working and setting it up as an object oriented um uh, programmer application and um, i did talk about singleton in some of the lessons so it would be a good idea if you maybe think about how you might set up a singleton for that particular end table conversion example um but you know we will need to start looking and returning to this and making a better job of it um, as we work through the module okay and um, i just needed to show you this and um, get you thinking about classes try not to just write um uh, a simple uh a simple using system and have an executable um we want to go a little bit beyond that so get using that early early on even though we haven't done too much but yeah okay you can always read ahead of course nothing wrong with that um okay so um What's important, I guess, is that we're going to learn more about OP using C Sharp next week, and we look at better designs um, and try to make better designs. So it's really that everything I wanted to talk to you about today in CS264 um, Lecture 3. Thanks very much for watching. All of the programs um, I'll put up onto, onto um, uh, Moodle, and you'll be able to have a look at, at Moodle, and so it should be, it should be fine. Um, I, I'll have a quick... Maybe I was going to say a quick look about the um, uh, assignment, but I don't need to do that. Um, but I think um, because there's a, there's a lab this afternoon, um, so please attend the lab. There's a tutorial tomorrow with Benham. So if you've got questions about the, um, uh, about the assignment, please ask in tutorial. And the way tutorials work, I guess, is that, you know, then only there he, he, he'll ask the questions, not a lecture, you know, so if you come along with your questions, he'll answer, he'll answer the questions as best he can. He probably won't give you the answers, you know, but he'll give you pointers. Um, and I'll have uploaded some lessons for you as well, so that should help you with how to do file handling, how to process JSON and so forth, how to look at command line arguments. Um, and the other thing, I guess, what's Im important is that, you know, if you don't ask questions, then the tutorial will finish. So we've an hour allocated, but they're not going to go in and just write and spend time coding and give you give you all that stuff. So um, so please use the tutorial and um, come along with your questions and send them in advance if you want. Um, I'll take some of the tutorials myself, but Ben is going to do these ones early on. Um, and uh, so yeah, take advantage of them. Please go to the labs. Okay, so we set up a lab yesterday, for example, and we didn't have very many people there and I expected a lot more people. So um, uh, um, please attend the labs okay and and work and you get help we've three really good demonstrators and then um, it'll be in teams and if you follow the messages i'll pop in myself as well of course so keep an eye and um, so we should be fine there on that front and um, so yeah i think that worked okay and fingers crossed all the tech worked okay today and um, there's a few few small issues i need to try to iron out a little bit um but we'll uh we get there okay thank you very much and i'll see you next time okay Bye-bye.